Right now, I'm going to show you all the top new features inside of Photoshop 2021. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today Adobe's dropped a new version of Photoshop which is Photoshop 2021. Right now I'm going to show you all my favorite new features and I'm going to do some more videos later where we jump in depth in some of those. It's Adobe Max time and this year Adobe Max is online and free and um, I recommend that you check out my class which is Compositing for Beginners. It's a three-part lab and there's almost 50,000 people signed up for my class so far. It's crazy. First new feature, it's easier to cut out hair inside of Photoshop. So why don't we just go through the automated process. So what we're going to do is choose the quick selection or the object selection tool. Then choose select subject. Adobe Sensei's AI is going to select the object. And now we're going to choose select and mask two new features. Now we have two options for refine mode. We can choose color aware and this is going to look at the colors and help it make the selections. This is good for smooth uh, areas, you know, skin and just normal things. But when it comes to hair, we want to go to object aware and you just want to confirm and it's going to redo it with a different algorithm. Let's change the view so we can see what's going on. We choose it on black. And we can see already we've got a pretty good selection. But the second new option is there's a refine hair button. Let's click on that and look at that. Photoshop sees the hair and what it does is it thickens the selection around the hair and helps with the hair selection. Let's take it one more step. Choose decontaminate colors, gets rid of the color fringing. And then we'll output this to a new layer with a layer mask and we've cut out the hair. Let's try it on a man. Same thing. Select subject. Choose select and mask. Notice it's okay, but it's not great. Choose refine hair. Boom, cleans up all those areas of the hair. Decontaminate colors and we'll output this to a new layer. And look at that, we cut them out just like that. Now, obviously it's not gonna give you a perfect cut out every single time, but this is definitely going to get you a long way towards that final route. The second new feature is how to reset transformation with smart objects. I'm just going to right click and turn this into a smart object. And then we're going to apply a transformation. Control T for free transform, right click, choose warp. I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key and this is going to enable me to split this a couple of times. And we're just going to be kind of silly with this. In fact, if anything, it's probably going to look like the guy from Men in Black. Remember the guy with the big head? So we can we can be just silly. Caricature kind of thing. Now, previously, if you did something like this, it was very difficult to get back to the original. All you've got to do now is right click on the smart object and you'll see reset transformation and it puts it back to the original. Okay, so let's look at our next feature, neural filters. And this one's quite exciting. What it does is it uses AI or artificial intelligence to do different things. So we're going to choose the filter neural filters and here's our neural filter gallery and you'll see there's things like skin smoothing and style transfer if you click the little download button it'll enable you to download and you can see quickly you know we can show more there's we can literally copy the settings of other you know pictures and apply them to this i'm going to turn this off though let's go for something else Let's go under the betas and there's other ones here. One of them is Smart Portrait. Let's turn this on. Okay, so here we can change the mood. Let's make him angry. Let's make him a little less angry. And of course, you know, he can be surprised. Let's reset that one. little less surprise. 
We can age. Let's make him aged more. We can make him younger. And you can see there's a whole slew of these. I'll do another video just on the neural filters at some point. So what do you guys think about the neural filters? Do you find these really fun or do you find them kind of scary? Let me know in the comments underneath. Let's look at the next one. This next one is really cool. We'll start with a simple image and then we'll do a more difficult. How much time do you spend replacing skies? Yep, that's right. We can do sky replacement. We just choose edit, go down to sky replacement, and it's going to replace it, whichever sky we choose. Now, the first thing you need to do is when you go in here, you probably won't see any skies. Just click on this gear and then append default skies and then these skies will appear that we are able to use. And we can just very, very quickly go in there and apply different skies. Let's look at a different option. So here's some people on a beach. This is a very wide photo. Let's see how this works. Choose edit, sky replacement. And boom. So let's look at a few more options that we have in here. If you look in here, we can shift or fade the edge. And what this does is this enables us to, you know, get it in very, very tight, where that's obviously too much. Or you can kind of fade it. So if you really look at a sky, it starts to fade more towards the horizon. So we can soften that and fade it in. It's not always perfect, like between these two people, it's struggling a little bit. We can also adjust the brightness of the sky. We can adjust the temperature. We can make it warmer or cooler. We can scale that sky so we can make it obviously larger or smaller. That's a little too small. You can flip it. And also we can make it work with the foreground. So if we want to change the color of the foreground to match the sky, we can do that. See so what we can do, put more of that color in there. And we can also make it lighter or darker. But another thing you can do is you can actually put your own sky in. So if I click on the sky, and you'll see this little plus button. If I click there, I'm going to navigate, and I'm going to grab a Milky Way. So let's do something completely random. Adds it to the library, and boom we can replace it just like that. So you can do your own skies or you can use the skies that come with it. And that's really useful because I know a lot of us probably have thousands of them that we've captured. All right, let's jump into some more. And, uh, and we're also gonna have a look at some of the new features inside of Camera Raw. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Let's choose Filter and we're gonna go into Camera Raw Filter. And two of the big changes we're gonna look at quickly one of them is, see this gear? We have the option to use compact mode. If I hit control and click, this will twirl everything open and we can see how that brings the, the uh, sliders closer together. Right click here and you can go out of compact into normal. See how they're a little bit taller? Compact mode uses less space. Let's go back to the regular mode just for now. And the other thing I want to show you is color grading. So if you click here inside of color grading, now we get a three way color wheel, just like what you would get in video editing. And if you look in here, we have the option here. Here's our three way. And what does that mean? Well, that means that we can do the different tones separately. So say the shadows, we want to add a bit of blue into the shadows. Notice it's affecting the shadows. we can determine our lightness there. And this determines our color, our saturation, forward and backwards. And in the hue, you can go around like that. So let's put a teal color in there, maybe a little less saturated, and maybe a little darker. We can do our highlights. Let's push for a teal and orange look, blockbuster look. 
lighten that up a little bit and of course we can also go into our midtones and we can adjust those. Double click to reset. Now you could also just go in here and select the shadows individually, the midtones, or our highlights, or we could do global color correction. So this means we want to push everything towards the blues or the oranges or the greens. Once again, choose the color outside here. That's a hue or the actual color. Saturation or the amount of color by sliding. There we go. And then lightness or luminance here. So it gives us a lot of control right there with the colors. Next one I'm going to show you is Pattern Preview. This is actually a lot more exciting than what it sounds like. Let's create a new document. And why don't we just do a 3x3. Three three. Great. And what we want to do is we want to create a tiling seamless pattern. Now, sometimes it can be very difficult to get these lined up at the end, but we are going to fix that right now. We're going to grab our custom shape tool. Why don't we grab a deer? And I'm just going to drag out and copy this deer onto the page. Now, how would this look as a tiling pattern? We can preview it. If we go up under view, choose pattern preview, and we zoom out, we can see how this would look as a tiling pattern. So if we want to move it to a different part, maybe copy out a second one. Or maybe another one. We can start to see this is how it would look as a seamless tiling pattern. And if you feel like, well, maybe this one needs to move a little bit. Let's put that one there and see how we can design that. And at this point here, if we want to actually build a pattern out of this, turn it off. Control A to select the whole thing. Choose Edit, Define Pattern, Deer, Enter. Let's drag it onto our image. There we go. Let's drag it underneath our model. And there we go. Now we've got wallpaper, red carpet, whatever. And you could also use it for, you know, tiling textures for 3D, for web, for different things like that. So super useful. All right. The last feature I'm going to show you right now is live shapes. So this works on several. One of them is there's now a triangle tool. And so if I actually want to create a triangle, I can drag out a triangle. But notice this little dot on here. If I want to change the shape of this triangle, I can round the corners just like that. So we want to add a color to it. Let's make it a warning sign. It'd be just kind of fun. So that's one kind of thing I can do there. I just drop that down to 50%. What else? Well, some of the other ones, such as the polygon, the line, a rectangle, or the rounded rectangle. Super useful. So now I can round these corners just by dragging. If I hold down the Alt or the Option key, I can do just one corner at a time. Okay, so there's a look at the exciting new features inside of Photoshop 2021. Let me know in the comments underneath which is your favorite new feature and also let me know which features you'd like to see me take more of a deep dive into. And if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Hit that subscribe button to get a new tutorial from me every single week and turn on your notifications. So anyway guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.